Oh, man. Hey, yo, yo, yo. Catch you on the rebound. Well, I thought we was about to freestyle there. Hey, man. if you got bars, we can do that, too. I'll play it at the uh, end, yo. <laughs> you already know, you know, you know, I ain't done like a good freestyle session. I'm always up for it. Right, I'm going to say the last five for the freestyle session because yes, I got sir. some bars, too, yo. Oh, yeah, we can bless the mics. Yes, sir. <laughs> Catch you on the rebound. The funk is real yes, and sir. the funk is here. Yes, sir. I got funk in the building from the Villagers podcast. Texas Tech Red Raider. Yeah. Noop. Yeah. You see him in the yeah. trip, man. Yes, sir. Big T's. Big double T. Super Bowl champions. Super Bowl champs. <laughs> Super Shout out to champs. my home. Real talk. Real talk. Ethiopian. Yes, sir. A little, 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 my Ethiopian. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is that? What is that? Uh, a mating call? It was a mating call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pull out the napkins, dip up the back. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, the yo, you t- <laughs> you're taking me too fast. Wait, wait, what is that? Yeah, said, so, so, so like uh, the women, it's a women thing actually. So the okay. women. In like uh, in response to something good, they'll uh, la, 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 like uh, it's almost like clapping. Okay, so it's their way of clapping, applauding things. Oh, so, I like that. Yeah, so if you ever around, you just hear la, 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 and you're like, oh shit. Yeah, like you think you' about to get hit with like a spear or something. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's just like just an clapping. applause. Yeah, ah, <laughs> it's good. I like that. I like that, bro. So, all right, back. Basically, bro, one of the reasons why I want you to have you on, bro, because like. I had a relationship at one point in my life with uh, like Ethiopian girl, mm-hmm. and like me and all my boys, like we kind of tried to immerse myself in the culture, bro. Right. So, one of the like funny like instances that we had, they took us to dinner. So we get to this round table, <laughs> and there's everybody's like, uh, wash your hands. I'm like, okay, I'm like, gonna wash my hands, and. Everybody just start digging in with their hands, <laughs> yo. And I'm like, bro, all, me and all my boys is like. What's going on? Like, what is going on? But they're like, like, what y'all doing? Like, get some bread and eat it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But, like, and we we tried it, you know what I'm saying? But it was, like, it was new for us. But uh, just one thing that I always, like, saw and, like, admired about, like, Ethiopian culture, like, Habasha, was that it was always a lot of y'all. I was always together, and it just seemed like, and I don't know how, like, it is to actually be Ethiopian, but y'all always moved together, like, y'all thought together, and y'all, like, really, like, supported each other. Yeah. Like, like how do like how would you like speak on like uh, y'all's culture too? I'm a I consider myself like a Black American, right. not an African American. You know Man, I mean? so it's funny you say Black American versus African American. That's yeah. that's always interesting to me. I ain't never been African. Yeah, that's I agree. Cause I I always say I'm African American. Shit, yeah. I was because I was actually born in Sudan. Okay, right? so I was born in Khartoum, Sudan. Um, my parents escaped Ethiopia at um, around in the eighties. During uh, during the during the civil war, basically. Okay. So they fled with thousands of other people, and uh-huh. ended up in Khartoum, refuged. And I was born there, and then we came here when I was nine months old. So practically, I grew up in Dallas all my life. Okay. My first time going back to Ethiopia was just last year. Really. Uh, but prior to that, you know, I grew I, I grew up in the culture. My parents okay. speak it. Uh, from going to events, churches, everything, right? I've yeah. always been immersed in our culture. Okay. So I've always had uh, our cultural, I guess, upbringing, okay. but with also the American Texas upbringing as well, right? So you yeah. have that Southern hospitality, mental, uh, hospitality yeah. uh, engraved in you as well as the Ethiopian side. And you were talking about like the culture. Uh, Ethiopian culture, man, is very, is very family oriented, yep. right? So it's always about- I sense that the family and like you said with the food so the injera that little round like Is that flat what it's bread called? yeah okay so it's actually made out of this um out of something called daif and uh, Dave is like this super food almost where it's like yeah. zero calories, zero everything. And it's like okay. a super, one of the most, if not the healthiest, one of the healthiest grains you can have. And it's found in Ethiopia. Okay. And white man tried to steal it and trademark it up in uh, Europe, but that was shot down immediately. This was like within the last year, obviously. Okay. And um, so the food is essentially bringing you together. So that's why everybody eats off of one plate. So you'll have everything there. So yeah. food brings us together. That's part of our culture and as well as just uh, different things within it. Like like you said, friends, family. And so us growing up here, yeah. we just kind of naturally gravitated towards each other, right? Okay. So even like at Tech, 
when you would see a lot of us together. Yeah. It was just natural because we just had that connection. So y'all right? hadn't known each other before, Tech. No, most of us did not know each other. Uh, I would say a good good 90% of us didn't know each other wow. up until college. Yeah, hey, I just clicked. Up. Just clicked. Just naturally just kind of gravitated towards each other. One person brought such and such yep. together, and then after that, the rest was history. That's what's up. And that's just how we kind of roll in the culture. And so, like, somebody like you, like you said, who's dated Ethiopian girl, a lot of times we'll have people who aren't Habesha or anything come, in, come around the circles and stuff like that, and they yeah. see how embracing we are and loving our it's culture dope. is. Because we're accepting of people, right? We yeah. always want to embrace. We want to share. That's, that's what it was. Are. That's what I felt. I'm like, damn. <laughs> they like, wanted to give you a bite of food, right? Hey, come in. Yes, Take yo. a bite. Go to like, What the fuck is that? But I was like, all right, let me try a little bit of this shit. <laughs> How'd you like it? Uh, I actually don't remember, bro. Yeah. It was, I was this is 2015. So this yeah. was like right when I left tech. But I don't, that's when I wasn't like as open mm-hmm. to like trying different foods now. Like if I ate that shit now, like I would, I would eat it. You know what I mean? Because a lot of it doesn't, it doesn't. I wouldn't even. And it really look it. appealing. Not all of I'm it saying. looks appealing. Yes. <laughs> no. Some of it look like baby food and mush and shit. You're like, oh, That's what it looks like, bro. Nah, but that shit is delicious, man. Really? Because it's a lot of spices and herbs in it. Okay. And honestly, if you were ever deciding to go vegan or vegetarian, yeah. Ethiopian food is the way to go. Really? I'm telling you, bro. Because the motherfuckers fast like. <laughs> Fucking 300 days out of the year, right? Do they? <laughs> yeah, especially like Orthodox Christians, they fast so much, bro. Okay. It's like, that's why, so there's so many vegan options. Okay. But the food is amazing, man. I'm going to have to put you on, man. I, yeah. You know what you would like? You Most of, most of my homies like uh, what's called thubs, which is basically um, like cut, like uh, beef squares almost. Okay. Sauteed and juicy with okay. peppers and onions. Okay. They, they love it. All right. So. And there's restaurants. Oh, man, there's there. lots. Okay. Most of most yeah. of us is like North Dallas area, so like the Greenvilles and okay. Forest Lanes, a whole hey, bunch of right restaurants. Right there by SMU. Yeah, a whole yeah. bunch of restaurants. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm down, bro. I try, to, I try all that shit. I'm gonna have to bless you, man. Yeah, bro. You the know, bless you, dog. Go, and with go. some coffee, obviously. You know, that's our thing. <laughs> coffee. Coffee's a, a, an Ethiopian thing, man. So really. There's like a big story. Um, I guess the story goes is there was a a farmer or whatever, and he was. That's how the how coffee was discovered. The farmer and his goats or whatever, and he found his goat eating a plant, okay. and he realized it started making his goat act funny and really like perky and jumping around. And okay. comes to find that bean or whatever, and eventually turns out to be coffee. Yeah. So that's how they say coffee was discovered. That's the mm-hmm. that's the tale behind it. Starbucks took that shit and ran with it. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's a whole thing with them. It really? Yeah, man. Cultural okay. appropriation. You already know these companies, they coming for it. <laughs> Yo, I love that you say that. <laughs> you know, I'll be on my pro black shit. It's February, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I bet that, but look, look, look. Like, I'm be honest, like, that's bullshit, bro. Yeah. Like, I like I get it. Like, and I enjoy like that we have like Black History Month, bro. But black history is like all year round. Bro. Like, our history is American history. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, like facts. Black history, but like, what the hell is that? But I mean, I enjoy it. You know what I mean? Like, I enjoy it. Man, have you ever thought about or have done, uh, like, the African ancestry to kind of see where you... I did. Oh, really? I don't know if I believe it. I said I was Nigerian. Like For 33%. real? Like, 33%. I've never been in Nigeria, bro. Like, I don't I don't think I believe it. 33%? I did, it's like a, a mouth swab. Yeah. You spit and you send it in. I don't know if I believe it. Which one? Uh, what was it through? It was Ancestry.com. Man. Yeah. See, so... Ancestry.com, I'm not too familiar with. I, I've heard the one that works best for black people is African Ancestry. Oh, there is one. Yeah, because that one will give you more precise uh, detail as far as uh, tribes really? and regions and shit like that. So, okay. like, you, for instance, you it says Nigeria, but it doesn't tell you where Nigeria. No. Whereas African Ancestry will tell you, okay, you're actually Igbo or Yoruba really? versus just being a whole Nigerian. Okay. I mean, it makes sense because it's West. So I would imagine most black people are probably going to be from West Africa just because of slave trade and all of that. Okay. Historically. So it's not bad, man. Hey, man, you can claim Burner Boy. You can claim Wiz King. You can can do all of that now, bro. You in there, fam. Okay. All right. So, and like, okay. There's like, so there's like, not really a beef, but there's like tension between like African-Americans and black people. So it's like black people feel like Africans think they're better than them. Yeah. And Africans think they're better than black people. And it's like, damn, like, like I got plenty of cool African friends, bro. And it's like, I don't, 
I don't see like I see it and yeah. I get it, but I'm like, dang, like why can't we all just be one? You know what I mean? Like, Man, I guess I guess let me ask you first because um, from a from a you know Black American perspective, yeah. uh, why do you think that is, or how do you perceive it, or I guess how have you seen it in your own like within your own family or other people close mm, to you? You know what I feel like, bro. I feel like Black people obviously like we have culture bro just through our musicians and artistry and books and everything that we've produced like right. i don't really feel like we have our own culture you know like yeah. we just go off of what was before us but like we don't necessarily have like our own culture and history that we can look back into that is like 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 from our ancestors you know what i mean and i feel like Africans do have that to an extent because, like, you guys can go back to Africa and see it and know it and learn it from yeah. someone when black African-Americans don't have that. So, like, our culture is, like, whatever we live around, whatever our parents knew, whatever their parents knew. And, like, if that, like, if the knowledge of that is not passed down, then, like, it's lost. And then you see people, like, we, we just get caught up in the world. Right. Like, whatever is going on is popular in the world. That's what we find ourselves really lose ourselves but that's where we try to find ourselves so that's kind of where i feel like the disconnect is is us not knowing what our culture is or like having a cultural identity outside of like drugs guns yeah. and like violence all that bullshit like, you know what i mean and it's crazy too because a lot of those i guess those negative things that were kind of input into the black culture yeah. a lot of it comes from and stems from just uh you know government whites all of it. you know it's needless to say you know? yeah just because of i think they've always they've always seen the the power and strength within black people yes. and that's the biggest fear right yeah. like one of my favorite lines from erica badu is um uh uh, most intellects don't believe in God, but they fear us just the same, right? Ooh. If we were made in his image, then call us by our names. Most intellects, you know what I'm saying? Like that line Ooh. right there is. Yeah, she deep too. Yeah, that shit is dope, right? Yeah. Because, you know, she's on that whole 5%er gods yeah, and earths is, yeah. thing. And um, <laughs> I am too. <laughs> you know what I mean? That shit is real dope because yeah. at the end of the day, it's like if black man was the original man. That's why they fear us because. They know we're made in God's image, so they were godlike. So that's why a lot of them call themselves gods and so forth. But I, I do believe that our our cultural connection yeah. is still there, even with uh, yeah. Black do Americans. So. They okay. don't. A lot of times they don't realize. Like, um, I even I, I see it all, a lot in just music and, yeah. and entertainment and everything. A lot of it you can see where the the influence can come from. You don't. It doesn't. You don't recognize it, but you see it through through history and everything. Just the. The drum patterns, yep. everything. It, drums, Africa. That's everything. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. it's already instilled in the DNA. Okay. It's just it's just comes out in different forms, right? Because of course, cultural that you're influenced by the society. So yeah. your society in America is going to be uh, more so of a melting pot. And you're talking about Africans. Uh, uh, you're talking about stems of Africa, like you're talking about Nigeria, Senegalese, all okay. Ghanaians, all these different West Africans, right, that were stripped from their land and brought yeah. here. So you have that big mixture of African cultures first arriving. And, of course, once they try to strip away their identity yeah. and, you know, subject them to slavery and, yeah. you know, to the bearings of what they tell them they should be, mm -hmm. I think there you kind of start losing that, right? Yeah. But then in – but in – but in hindsight, it's still there, low key. But it's still oh. kind of just, it's still engraved in the DNA. It's like a dog. Sure. You can domesticate a dog, but at the end of the day, he's still a wolf. A dog, and yeah. it's gonna come <laughs> out in different forms in different ways, yeah. right? It's the same thing. You can, that's you can't true. suppress it. It's still, it's still within you. That's true. And so that's one thing that's I dope. always love. I like that. Yeah, bro. I like that. Yeah. I'm a big proponent, man. Like our connection with uh, black and African has always been there. Yeah. Like. Pan Africanism, the whole yeah. Marcus Garvey's, the Hylas Alasas, all of these, all these people, man, they they tell us, you know, come back. And even nowadays, what a lot of people don't realize is, um, Africa is opening the doors for Black people all around the world to they come are. home. They really are. They are. And that's why I always encourage Black people find out where you're from, man, and take those opportunities to go back. Because what you don't realize is, there's a lot of opportunity in Africa. That's don't my be friend keeps telling me bro yeah. don't get fooled by these white folks trying to tell you it's poor and there's nothing there it's yeah. a bunch of hungry homeless butt naked people running around it's not that yeah that ain't the case man yeah. it's beautiful the most beautiful people and women i ever seen bro you wake up you turn your head everybody yeah. black yeah 
I know they're beautiful. Them Ethiopian girls was yeah. shook. I fell in love every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I fell in love every day I was there. I was just like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you got to be careful because they will finesse you for a, a green card. You are a ticket, boy. Yeah, and how they do it? <laughs> we try to go there. They try to come here. It's like... I got you. I got you. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Tell us about um, Bunatan. Buna, okay, so. Did um, I pronounce it right? Yeah, Bunatan. So Bunatan means Bunatan. coffee. Coffee. So coffee, like I was telling you, is a big part of our culture. Yeah. And that's um, it's almost the centerpiece of our everyday life. Right. And uh, so that was a platform, a Habesha platform on uh, social media. It started off uh, Snapchat, Instagram, so yeah. forth. And it's probably the largest Habesha uh, community platform. Still. Out there. Yes. And it's kind of been, which is crazy because it hasn't been active in over a year. But okay. if you're looking at numbers, it's still the biggest. But uh, activity wise, I would say no. Okay. But uh, prior, uh, up to about a couple years ago, we had started a podcast uh, where they brought me and my boy Benny Hundreds and my homegirl Salam together, and of course with Professor AMX, and we all started the show. Yeah. And we didn't know what you know what to become of it because, granted, that was my first time doing podcasts and doing. Really? So I had no experience of what to expect or. Yeah what you know what was gonna happen and then the feedback was tremendous in the beginning and you know we did up to about 14 15 episodes okay. and uh you know we had gained a lot of notoriety yeah. because it's you know the platform being large it's worldwide of course it's connecting the whole community okay and so um we did that it was successful and what happened i guess you know things kind of just started falling apart at the end whatever internal issues was going on okay. and it dismantled right I get it. so i get it so fast forward a couple of years later, we had to start our own thing. We got together. It was like, man, hey, man, let's pick up where we left off, man. Let's see if we can do it again. Regain, man. So, you know, it's been just a hustle trying to get back to that, to those moments, man. We had some funny moments, man. I was telling you some uh, of these crazy stories, man. <laughs> the one where it was like, uh, I guess it was equivalent to a preacher and he was throwing the water uh, on people. And then like, it was you and yeah. he threw the water on you. I was like, yeah. The holy water boy. I swear. Yeah. <laughs> cause I'm, cause my, a lot of, uh, I'm, I'm a Orthodox Christian. Right? So you are a Christian. Cause yeah. I was going to ask you is the, is the religion Islam? Uh, so in, in, I would say it's like 50, 50, 50, 50. Okay. Yeah, it's around 50, 50 just okay. depends. But, uh, the majority I would say is like Orthodox Christian or Muslim. And so Orthodox Christian being the, um, the first base of Christianity. And of course, you can go on today's, you know, broke up to Catholic and Protestant, da, 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 whatever, right? Yeah. So Orthodox Christianity takes on a lot of uh, uh, the Old Testament being Orthodox. So you have a lot of Judaic uh, practices almost uh, okay. within the Christian practice, right? So part of it is holy water, right? So these priests will come around with holy water, you know, they'll bless everybody with the, the water and everything, similar to Catholics. And our priests, man, I don't, that, so it's funny because the hands, man, they pour some in their hands and you know, you're thinking, oh, it's gonna be like a little water <laughs> and it will hit you like yeah. a full cup of water is and you're like, what? Yo, that video <laughs> had me dying, yo. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yo the, I guess like the, I guess like the visuals, like there's one with like yeah. a goat, I guess. <laughs> For me to be, for me to be like a black American, yeah. and just be like, damn, like, is that what it's like over there? Or just like, like, you know what I mean? Like, damn, like, I really want to go see like what that's like, like over there in Africa, or, like in Ethiopia and see like, is that, is that what it's like? Or like, what is it like really about? Man, you know I mean? you'd be surprised. When yeah. you go. There is goats, cows everywhere on the streets, bro. You dodging, you, the traffic is the worst drivers I've ever seen in my life. Red lights are suggestions. <laughs> yeah, red light, and the red lights tell you how long it's gonna be red. Let's say, okay, it's 28, 27, 20. Man, man, fuck this. <laughs> People just running right through it. <laughs> With the oncoming traffic. Oh, no cares, bro. Just uh, 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 uh. And then you're, yeah. at the same time, you got a herd of goats. <laughs> <laughs> Where you're like, you got, you try to make your right turn. Ah, oh, shit. Hey, hurry up. <laughs> you got this guy smacking his 20 goats. <laughs> come on, Damn. come on, come on. Chip, chip. <laughs> yeah. Damn. That's Africa for real, for real. And yeah. electricity just goes out. Really? For no reason. Okay. You just be chilling like this. Yeah. We go <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cut off the whole damn podcast, boy. Damn. 
<laughs> okay. So okay. So your last trip to Ethiopia, like, what was that like? Man, eye opening. Okay. It was life changing, man. Because that was my pilgrimage almost, right? Okay. So I, I got the I got the opportunity to go back with my dad. So my dad uh, took me back to Addis Ababa, which is the capital, okay. and that's where he grew up. So he's a city boy. So okay. he grew up there. And he was just showing me everything. And my dad hadn't been back in, he hadn't went the year before, but prior to that, he hadn't been back in maybe 35 years. Because a lot of, so when he left, it was, it was, it was during the war. So a lot of the memories that our parents and their generation have that live out here or in Europe or whatever that have left Ethiopia since have a very bad memory and recollection of what it was back then, right? Because it, it was so much beauty and peace when they grew up. It was amazing. And then when the war and everything broke out, it was hell. Hell on earth, right? People dying on the streets, people being taken prisoners left and right, being tortured, being subjected to whatever means the government decided. Yeah. So even my dad was a victim of it, right? Really? I didn't know a lot of the things. So it was real. that was one of my favorite parts is going through uh, these different areas and different parts and my dad having these flashbacks and sharing moments and stories That's with dope. me. That's gotta be dope. Man, there was some like, um, so there was this moment, we went to this, what's called the Red Terror Museum. Okay. And it was a time period where uh, basically it was a genocide. And so the the communist government that took over, Dirk, and so my dad, as we're going through the museum, he sees like, uh, there's like this torture chamber set up, right? Uh, depicting how they used to torture some of the prisoners. And so they would have like a stick, right, or whatever it is, and then they would pretty much kind of like hog tie you on the stick, right? And then they would beat the bottom of your feet, right, to to, to like to gain information out of you because they assumed that everybody was part of some um, op, op, opposing collective, right? There's okay. different uh, opposing groups. So they assumed if you were young that you were probably part of that. Okay. And so they would just grab you off the street. Hey, you! Come here, where are you going? And they just start doing that shit. And so my dad starts sharing me, sharing with me these stories. And I was like, what? Yeah. I never knew this. Yeah. So a lot of that shit. was interesting. And then just meeting family that I've never met before. Okay. Uh, you know, gaining that connection, especially because when you come there, the family is like super happy. They it's like they they want to feed you, take care of you, love you, hug you, do all this shit as if they've known you all their lives. And I've never met or talked to any of these people. That's dope. But took me in as if they've known me all their lives. And so that was really dope. What What is the language? Is the language Ethiopian? So um, there's actually about 82 different languages in I, Ethiopia. I hear that a lot. Different dialects. Uh, so Ethiopia is a very diverse place, right? Africa okay. in general is super diverse. Okay. So you're talking about a bunch of different tribes and ethnicities, right? Whereas Ethiopia has uh, over a dozen tri uh, ethnicities technically, right? So... The main languages would be Amharic, okay. uh, Oromo, uh, Oromina, uh, and Tigrinya. Okay. So my family speaks Amharinya, and my mom can speak that and Tigrinya. But Amharic is going to be the like the main dialect. Okay. So everybody can speak Amharinya for the most part, and then uh, I understand it. I can't speak it. Okay. But boy, for some reason. There'd be times where I just vomit a mod in I'd be like, I don't know, I'm like, oh shit, how'd I know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just come out of nowhere. Yeah, you know, you you know, you submerge yourself in a language enough, you're gonna pick it up after a while. Do they speak okay? If I'm Black American, I'm going over there, and I only speak English. Like, will I be okay? You can get by. I can get by. You can get by. Okay. Uh, I'd, <laughs> it's gonna be hard. You know what I'm saying? Give, give a give a Black American <laughs> yeah. trip to Africa a starter pack. Man, We're like, what do we need? The first thing I always tell, uh, I would say, you need to go to the city. You okay. got to go to Addis Ababa first. I wouldn't go to no damn small town areas to Village. go. Yeah, because, you know, there's a lot of historical areas you can go visit, right? Yeah. And so I would say, go, go to Addis Ababa first. That's like your New York City, D.C. Okay. It's, okay. it's a massive, sprawling city. Okay. People everywhere. I would say do that. A lot of people over there can speak English. Okay. You'll be surprised, bro. You're going to meet. Uh, like you'll hit the clubs. Mm -hmm. The clubs look better than the shits out here. They playing the latest music. Mm -hmm. They playing the same shit we playing over here. Yeah. They mix in with all the Afro beats, yeah. obviously with okay. hip hop and even Ethiopian music, right? Yeah. So the, the the clubs is popping, baddies right. everywhere. You are gonna see you something bad and gonna be like, damn, I don't know if I can highlight it. I don't know, I'm hiding. I'm a talk to him. <laughs> right? And yeah. then you just gonna be like, hey, and she gonna be like. 
hey, how are you? And you're gonna be like, damn, bitches, you from America? You're yeah. gonna be like, no, I'm from here. That's how well okay. a lot of them can speak. You'd be surprised, bro. Okay. So you okay. wouldn't have trouble. All right. Now, if you want to start going to these smaller areas, yeah. you're gonna need a translator. Okay, for sure. <laughs> yeah, like you just can't. You can you can try to make it by. But it's gonna be tough, some because of the broken English. Okay. Some some people can still speak English, but it's like you'll need to translate in those smaller areas. Okay. Okay. But I encourage all black people to go to Africa. You do. I, that's like my biggest thing. It's like you need yeah. to go to Africa. Yeah. You'll see, bro. Africa is literally going through what's. Um, you see what like Akon's been doing. Fuck yes. That's what's that's what's going on in Africa. That type of opportunity is available. Yeah. All the shit that. You would see in America, you can literally take and do it over there. Got it. That's what I seen like Uber, Lyft. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some girl that was here, she she was like, I think she might have even worked for the company. Yeah. You know what she did? She's like, cool, fuck working for y'all. I'm finna just take this exact thing. <laughs> I'm, finna, I'm finna go to Ethiopia. I'm finna make one, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm set. And yeah. that's what she did. That's wow. Like a lot of people do that. Mm. People opening up restaurants, everything. Is there um like if you go to Europe you can only stay for like thirty days? Is it the same if you go to Africa? Man, or does it depend on if you're working or not. I think. Well, I don't think there's a limit, honestly. Really? No, nah, because I know people oh. who go for and stay for months. My boy Benny. Wow. That boy was going for a month. That motherfucker stood for six. Yeah, that's what you said <laughs> on the on the episode. Yeah, I was like, "Welcome back, bro." You know yeah, because I mean? okay. you could just you just have to get your uh, passport or not your passport, your visa renewed. Okay, so that's the only difference. Because okay. once that visa expires, boy. Okay. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know I got I mean? you. <laughs> and I always tell people make sure I, I I say this about every country anybody travels to make sure you check what's going on like the the political, political. climate oh, of the country. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be popping up during some hot. You know, some hot uh, shit going on. Yeah. You get, get stuck, bro. <laughs> I, I was in Paris, and they was protesting. And mind you, like, Paris, France, like, they weren't super violent. Mm -hmm. They were, like, blowing up cars and shit. That sounds Paris. super violent, bro. But I'm not, they weren't, like, <laughs> shooting. Like, oh. nobody was getting shot. You know what I'm yeah. saying? But I was, like, in the middle of it, like, damn. Like, it was exciting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I didn't, they weren't shooting. So I was like, I, I probably won't get shot or nothing like this. But, like, <laughs> dog, it was, like, police everywhere. It was burning cars, blowing up like nice cars, Maseratis, painting the buildings, destroying everything like in the city in Paris. What was going on? Um, they were protesting like Macron. So Macron oh. is like their Trump. So they was just like protesting them. They just wasn't with it. Everybody had their like yellow jackets on. Yeah. Uh, and shit, I was out there with them, bro. Like I like that shit. Like, it was like fight the power. Yeah, like <laughs> it, uh, yeah, it was it was exciting, bro. Um, yeah. So I'm like I I like to I like you that you say you're creative because. Uh, like I, like, I went to school, you know what I'm saying, and, like, I couldn't really, like, speak very well. I took a speech class at Tech, actually. Uh, and then, like, when I did that, like, shit, I started to, like, read, bro, and just yeah. study. And, like, I almost, like, think of myself as an activist, bro. Because yeah. it's just, like, certain bullshit that I see behind the scenes that's going on that, like, people don't really get. Yeah. And they, like, they don't under they, Well, they don't understand it, because yeah, they, like, caught up in the world, like, the imaginary world rather that's than, like, right. the real stuff that's going on. And I'm like, damn, you yeah, know, like. I gotta try to like put people on game to like what's going on out here, like in any form. That's why I said like in, in in a in a form of entertainment. So it's not just like all right, come to this class and learn yeah. about this. Like nah, like I'm gonna find a way to edutain <laughs> you. Like you know what I mean? Like somehow yeah. get this message through to you. You know what I mean? That's and, like, true. I'm trying to figure it out. Like the best way to do it. You know what I'm saying? It's tough, man. I always yeah. tell people, um, because I always find that. That's to be the same difficulty I have too. Like, how can you get your message across yeah. where it's going to be received the way you'd want it to, right? Yes. Especially depending on the message, yeah. man. And I think you can. You always have to just kind of stay genuine to who you are and Got deliver it. it the only way you know how. Got it. Because essentially, like you said, man, sometimes, and like that's why I love like comedy, for instance, right? Comedians Bro. do a great job. They said um, the fuck they want to say. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They'll make you laugh, yep. but also tell you some real shit. Tell you some real shit. They open up your mind and have you really thinking, like, damn, yeah. you're right. I ain't never put it. Like Dave Chappelle, Chris Rock, they great at doing that shit. Yeah. That's, Who your favorite comedian? Man, that's so. I, <laughs> all time, man. One. All time. It's either it's either Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle. I feel like Dave is the hottest. Like, right now, currently, yeah. but, like, he, obviously, he started with Chris. Like, he probably followed Chris, Eddie Murphy. Like, 
even going back, like my yeah. dad, my dad had comedy albums. Oh, like, so yeah, yeah music CDs those, yeah. and then comedy albums. Like, what the fuck is this? I just think it was really just telling jokes for hours. Yeah. And like people want to hear that shit. So I'm like, I would try it, bro, just to be able to say what I want to yeah. say. Um, Cause I like, I had like weird encounters. Like, so me and my mom would always go to the Arlington Improv. Like, Cause I just love, like, you can sit there and like, they're literally right there. Yeah. And so I like, I watched the crowd reactions. I watched them. Me and my mom went and my ex girlfriend and my grandma. And it was Monique. Oh, yeah. yeah. So like, my mom, when she laughed, bro, like she is, it's it's loud. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's loud, bro. It's like it's loud to the point where it's like, God damn, that shit was funny, but like, is, is it that funny? So, like at the time, I was in an interracial interracial relationship. My girlfriend was Arabic, and Monique was like, "Look at him over there with that white girl." And my mom stood up. She was like, "Oh no, 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 she's not white." And the dude was like, "Man, would you please, like, would you please sit down?" And it had been Monique. You know how like comedians will fuck with you. Yeah. So Monique was like, nah, I got this. And then, like, the whole show, like, for literally for an hour, ended up being about us. Oh, Like, wow. yes. Like, yeah. she just fucked with us for, like, an hour, bro. She's talking about uh, interracial relationships and my mom and my grandma and all that. And, like, she, like, I'm sitting right there in the front, bro. So she, like, grabs my hand, and she's just looking, like, directly in my eyes, bro. And, like, when people talk about, like, energies and stuff like that, like, I, that was the first time in my life I really understood, like, wow, like, that shit is real. Like, that shit is, like, really real and just, like, through, like, through entertainment and, like, comedy, like, you can really, like, pass along a message and an right. energy to somebody else, bro. Because yeah. I was just, like, I, I couldn't breathe, bro. Like, it was we it was weird, bro. It was, like, it was really, like, a... Like an angelic, like prophetic moment, bro. And then afterwards, like she let us come backstage and like meet her. And we got to like take pictures with her and shit. All because like my mom, like laughing loud as shit, bro, and like confronting Monique. So yeah. I was like, damn, like, yeah, like that shit. Comedy, bro, comedy always had like a special place, bro, with me. Damn. Yeah. So what did Monique say eventually to y'all about it? Um, she was, well, she just told me, like, well, one, she was like, she like she was like um, people always judge like black men for like being with like white girls. She was like, well, uh, maybe his mom, maybe he felt like his mom was a bitter woman. Maybe he felt like his grandma was a bitter woman, so he couldn't wait to be with a with a woman that wasn't bitter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Which I never thought about it like that. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, like I'm like, all right, cool. I can see like how most men like seek like woman that's not like their mom or their parents just depending on what they dealt with as like uh like a way to get away you know what i'm saying but to be honest and true like the way that like uh just a black family structure foundation of like everything was broken was by breaking up the black family yeah you know what i mean so i'm like okay i at least want to try because like i've i've only dated outside my race bro like i'm oh, like yeah. like predominantly you know what I mean? But I had those few. Like, I had that one Ethiopian chick that I dated, and I was like, I don't forget it. You know what I'm saying? Because it was like, it was the, the type of, it wasn't love, bro, but it was like, it was something real, and it was strong. And I was like, damn. Like, I might want that again. You know what I'm saying? And I just, I don't know, bro. Like, it's my life, and I get to live it. So. Yeah, man. I, I, I feel like you, got, you love who you love, man. Yeah. Even if, like, a lot of people might not agree with it, but yeah. at the end of the day, man, you can't help who you care about. Yeah, like my Arabic girlfriend, like I, I loved her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I still, that's my best friend. Like it, it probably was it. Do you feel like it was gonna work out or was not? Um, it was I, not like like really where I'm at right yeah. now, Funk. Is like I just I just need a time for myself as a man to get my life in there, get my shit together. Like, well, you said she's Arabic. She Muslim? Yeah. Not practicing though. Yeah, but her family. Yeah, I know that they probably was not nah, fucking with this. To a certain extent. Yeah. I already know, man. <laughs> I already know. When it yeah. come to religion, I already know foreigners, man. They it's, it ain't yeah. no joke. It's but like, they weren't they weren't very strict Muslims. Yeah. Though. Not they no one was covered. They didn't fast. Like oh, they weren't oh, super strict. Like, nah. Nah, they was pretty Americanized. Yeah, they done, they done came here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were pretty Americanized. Um Yeah. Yeah, man. So like I said, like you say, you're a creative man, like I, st I study, man. I, w I would go back and it started with like studying like Martin Luther King, which 
I loved him, you know what I'm saying? Like, I loved everything he was for, but then, like, you got Malcolm as well. And if you go to Malcolm, you're going to find, like, Fred Hampton, like you say, Marcus Garvey, Angela Davis. Yeah. There's some people that was talking some real shit. And, like, most of them either got killed or, like, silenced or, you know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? Like, they just took them away from us. And, like, and we still have people like that today, like Dr. Umar, you know, Dr. Yeah. Umar, Brother Polite, like, it's a lot of people like RZA. It's a lot of people that still speak that truth, but yeah. I don't really feel like it gets as publicized as it should. And it, it probably never yeah. will. But for the people who do understand and who do want to take the time, like, like I'm with you. You know what I mean? Like, that's that's kind of like where I'm at. No, man, I agree, bro. Because a lot of times it's like as black people, we can get we can get distracted by a lot of the things that are going on and kind of lose sight of what what really is important. Okay. Like, for instance, like the State of the Union address last night, right? Okay. I didn't, Trump, I didn't, I didn't watch. I didn't, I didn't catch it either, but I was catching, like, the highlights this okay. morning and last night. But a lot of it was, you know, Trump, you know, he used his moments to try to garner black votes, obviously, right? So okay. saying different things that, would appeal to him like whether it's prison reform or yeah. the hbcus helping that um different you know different things that would you yeah. know make black people's ears perk up to actually gain that, he ain't doing that, that shit. yeah he probably ain't gonna do it but, <laughs> but at the same time he's gonna get some he's gonna yeah. get some black people's attention i always tell people at the end of the day man it's it's all about your message and what you're saying because essentially if you say the right things you'll get some attention Okay. Niggas will start listening. They'd be like, oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> you have my attention. Continue. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> right? yeah. So you just have to say something. Not like Dr. Umar, I be I be fucking with some of the stuff he says and some of the shit he be coming out of left field and I'm like, yeah. his conspiracies. Yeah. I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, you have <laughs> to know when to, like, you have what? to know when to, like, tone it down. Um, I like him, Killer Mike, Dick Gregory. It's a lot of them, man. It's a lot of them. Oh, like so many. The, the the most influential like I always say like the 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 best of life has already been lived, bro. Yeah. Like everything under the sun has already been done. Like I would just try in my life to like recreate some of those moments, bro. Because like the best, most influential people, like selfless, they've already lived, bro. Like, but like we can try to do something or half as much as they've done, like in our lifetime. That's the beauty of it, man. Their legacy continues to live on, and yeah. all you can do from it is learn. Yeah. That's what I always tell people, man. Is they gone, but they not forgotten. Yeah. It's a legacy that they left behind. It's either you can follow in it or you can just they've they've laid down the foundation. Some of the like Kobe, for instance. You know, God rest Kobe's soul, man. Peace, him and his man. daughter and all those other victims. Yeah. Like Kobe's gone, right? But his men, you know, his values and the things he's just talked about and he used to always preach yeah. and push, they those things are still gonna be there. Live on forever now. You know what I'm saying? And the thing is, is all it's gonna do is inspire millions of young people true and so at the end of the day these tragedies can sometimes inspire true. and lead to triumph in different other ways right that's true those are that's legends never die man that's a fact they don't. you know what i'm saying they, they never don't. die bro they live they're gonna live on through people yeah so that's why i love like nipsey all of that yeah man that's why that's what kind of like another reason why i asked you about ethiopia like nipsey has spoke about like when he went to africa how it changed his mindset right you know what i mean so Everybody in America want to go to Atlanta, Miami, Vegas to get away. Like, I just feel like from just from a mental health standpoint, like to see and believe something else, you have to take yourself out of your environment, bro. Like just being able to play basketball and being able to travel, I get that all the time. So I'm like, dang, like if I could just take some of my people with me to see this stuff, like when you go and see this different place, like, your mind will change yeah. a little bit or like it'll spark something, some change in your life. You know what I'm saying? Just by being able to go and see it and experience it and feel it, like the culture, the food, like all of it. You bro, know what I mean? It's there, dog. Yeah. I, man, going back there, bro, it will, like I always tell people, save up, go out of the country, just f forget Atlanta, Miami, man. Yeah. You really want to turn up, man, go overseas. Yeah. Now, first of all, it's super cheap, by the way. Yes. So, okay, <laughs> the cost of living is cheap oh yeah man you can get okay. you a i'd say a good three and a half star hotel for like 50 bucks a night over okay there and then if you if you a clubber and you want to go hit the clubs and get okay. bottles and do all that all shit right. a bottle is like 40 50 bucks in the club yeah 
Oh, I'm flexing. And, and you could do that. <laughs> one was about bottles like rappers in that shit, dog. And yeah. A big flexing. And then oh. you could take that shit to go. You can leave? Yeah, if you don't finish, it's like, oh, fuck it. Nah, let's just take it. Okay. Or you could be like, hey, man, hold my hold bottle. Hold my bottle. I'll be back tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, cool, all right, we got you. Yeah. That'll take care of you, bro. That's what's up, yo. Um, I mean, shit, speak on Jamie Foxx, man, like. You said you said he's one of the, kind of like one of your big influences. Oh man, I love Jamie Foxx. You know, not only Jamie Foxx from Dallas, you know, or not Dallas from Terrell, Terrell. but he's from Texas, right? Yeah. And so, Jamie Foxx, man, one of the funniest things uh, I remember watching a video. It was a home video. I had a third grade teacher who went to high school with him, and so uh, she was like, "Yeah, I went to high school with Jamie Foxx, but back then we, you know, his name was Eric, Eric. or whatever." Yeah. And so we're like, "Oh, okay." And that's the first time I ever found out what Jamie Foxx's real Bishop. name was. Yeah, Eric Bishop. <laughs> I was like, "Oh, wow, okay." Yeah. And so she pulled up uh, a old play from high school, and he was in the play, right? Like he was the star of the play, and he was singing, dancing. I'm like, "Wow, he could do all of that." And this is during like third grade, so this is around like Jamie Foxx show. So okay. the Jamie Foxx show was around there. Hot. That was hot, hot, right? Yeah. So it, it was like Jane Fox was like, you know, Nancy. he was an up and rising yeah. star at this time. So I, I you know, I seen that, and I, I, Jamie Foxx to me is the greatest entertainer of all time. Like I, I of argue, all time, of all time, I argue that with anybody. I said, I said, entertainer, entertainer, what said, form? Entertainment. I said, you name somebody that can entertain you in every form and facet. This man can sing, uh, act, make you laugh. What else can he do? Sing, act, laugh. I know Put him I'm up there. But you, of all time, yeah, bro. Who would you who would you compare him to? And like, you say he could sing, he could dance, and he could act, and he can make you laugh. Yeah, he does it all, man. Mm. Ain't too many people that could do all three of those things. It's gonna come to me. I'm gonna I'm yeah, let it breathe a little bit. Jamie, like making you, you laugh is tough too. That's hard. That's bro. hard, and that is hilarious. He could incorporate his music in it. Like yeah. his stand up. My man, did he even pull yeah, out that the was piano? Cold. That was cold. That was cold. And start singing. <laughs> and that shit was funny. You know what I'm saying? That shit is hilarious, boy. This dude is making yeah. us laugh and do that shit. Yeah. Like somebody I, I, I'm noticing that's starting to do that too. Yeah. Uh, like DC Young Fly. Like I think he's, he's like, hilarious. He's funny. The 85 South Show is funny. Dog, yeah. they are stupid they funny. Are. Really I are. love those guys, yeah. man. They fucking are. hilarious, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he's starting to get there, man. Like, he's yeah. starting to showcase his musical abilities. Like, yeah. that's really dope. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, you know, I see he's doing his acting thing. Yeah. It's probably, you know, he ain't going to be able to get all the crazy roles like Jamie Foxx just because he got all them tattoos. He got and shit. how high, too, bro. Yeah. That's pretty big for the that's culture. Huge. Like, that's big. I want him to get as big as possible. I'm not going to lie. You know, if they can, like, cover up his tattoos, that'll help him. They can. If they can. Makeup. Makeup, hell yeah. Do, make, him, make him up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's all you got to do. Yeah, because you, you can't have no face hey, tattoos. See, up I'm like. really thinking hard over here, yo. You might be right. Yeah, you bro. might be right because many people can sing, dance, and act, but like make you laugh too. That's tough. That's, tough. That's hard. That's bro. super hard. That is bro. not easy, yo. I get to you. I get yeah, it. that comedy. Get shit. It. Yeah, and his comedy it. is like he's super hilarious. Oh, he's. He's top 10. Like, he yeah. up there, like, for sure. He's like, one of my favorites, for sure. Yeah, he up there. I might need security. I still yeah. watch that. Bro, it's still funny, like, today. Boy. Like, going to Africa. That's the funny. <laughs> 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 that shit had me dead, dog. Yo. <laughs> I mean, hit it. Wow. Um, yeah, man, we've been going for a minute, man. Um, bro, I, most everything I wanted to talk about, other than, okay, you being a noob, man, and just, like, I wouldn't say like tech is definitely not an HBCU, oh, but no, they had no. a they had a HBCU feel to it when yeah. it came to those fraternities. I used to go to the probates and kick it like that, and it was lit. Yeah. Um, what, like, what made you want to like get in the frat? So, um, in high school, my I was in a uh, college and uh, college enrichment program for uh, first generation college okay. students called Upward Bound. Okay. And my counselor, yeah, I know Upward Bound. Oh, you know, so yeah, so you had a basketball. Shit. Oh, yeah, they had basketball, too, yeah. and then they had these college enrichment programs, right? Okay. So they had them in, like, the magnet school. So my parents transferred me out of Berkner to Richardson High School to, to go do that. And okay. all the counselors were, like, Greek. So the the women were Deltas, and, like, the one guy who was in it was a noop. 
Uh-huh. And so me and him were always really tight. And of course, I didn't know nothing about it besides like what my cousins used to always talk about the stereotypes, my older cousins who were in college. Yeah. They say, oh, you, can, you know, this stereotype, that stereotype. And um, so uh, he had like a tattoo and he had like the, the paraphernalia in his room. And then I think by the time I was graduating, I was just asking him questions. And then he would tell me different stories about his time in college and, you know, how, you know, how pledging all that different stuff was for him. And it, it got me really intrigued. And not only was I intrigued just in Kappa, but I was intrigued in just the whole black Greek organization. Yeah. And so me, I'm like a big history geek. Okay. So I love deep diving into like historical things and just finding out as much information as I can. Okay. So I started learning about all of it all right. from all the fraternities to the sororities. Okay. So I wanted to get to, to better understand and just kind of just doing all of my research. I still, I just naturally kind of gravitated towards Kappa want to be a part of that legacy and just and and then that's what led me to pursuing that when I got to college so I knew immediately as soon as I got to tech that's what I was going to do it was just hey what would it do you know I'm trying to do uh, guys I want to be a I'd love to be a member of Kappa Alpha Psi (laughs) yo how did you feel when uh Boosie had the uh (laughs) the sweater on (laughs) yeah Boosie, bro. First of all, I love Boosie. Dog. Yeah. I'm like, I'm a Boosie fan. Bro. Yeah. So I grew up on Boosie. Yeah, we all did. You know what I'm saying? So when I see Boosie doing, I was just, I just, you know, face palm moment. I was like, oh my God, Boosie, what are you doing? Because I knew he has a, a brother that's a noob. Oh, does he? Yes. He actually has a younger oh. brother that's a noob. And okay. so that's what made me laugh about it at first because I'm like, where is, where is your brother at right now to tell you not to do that? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. and so, and I and then when Boosie was like, you know, he did it out of like respect to show love. I understood because I just you know yeah, just yeah. following Boosie and shit. Yeah. So I understood his intentions were all good. Yeah. So I didn't. I wasn't upset at it. I I just found it more funny. And then just him going at it and when he was doing a somebody show me the shimmy. I heard y'all do that white and die. It was funny. <laughs> Boosie have no rhythm, bruh. Bruh, <laughs> no. Uh, uh, I was like, Whoa. hey, that was comedy, yo. <laughs> I yeah. loved it, dog. Yeah. And all he did was like, in turn, all he did was big up uh, the he fraternity, did. right? All he did was just, he did. you know, I always tell people, hey, good publicity or bad publicity is publicity, man. That's just good for the frat, man. True. So I was like. And it wasn't man. bad publicity. like No, it anything. wasn't. Like, it wasn't bad. But it's like, it's if you're not in it, you can't really wear that shit. It's yeah. unspoken, but everybody really know. Like, <laughs> it's, like uh, it's like, I guess, you know. You know, for him, he's like, I don't know what that is, man. Like, I get it, dog. Yeah. You know, until like, and then I started watching like his IG lives where people are like explaining it to him, and he's yeah. like, "Oh, uh, that's all you got to do, bro. You just have to break it down into a form that that person is gonna understand it." And then it's like, "Oh, cool, I get it. It's like, okay, it's like that. Bet it's that say way less, way. I won't do it. <laughs> it's that way with you know a mean? lot of stuff, yo. That's a man. And my whole thing with like even Black Greek letter organizations, it's like." Over time, it's it almost like it it's starting to get watered down, like the meaning and the concept really? of it. Okay. I, I feel like that's how it is. You know, just kind of looking at it. Okay. And in turn, the values and the historical aspect and what it really the meaning behind it of it kind of just kind of fades away into the into the shadows where people now it looks more so like a social group yeah. and it's just like a instead of the real meaning yeah, for it. It looks like some you guys served shit. Yeah. I mean, Martin Luther King was in a fret. Uh, a lot, of, a lot of those guys are in, most people in politics are in France so. man you can go down the list man so many influential black people were a part of them and that was the whole purpose of them originally right they all yeah. started in a sense of to bring unity within the yeah. black communities right because a lot of the ones that originally started were in predominantly white institutions right okay. so the alphas was cornell that's a white institution Kappa was indiana that's a predominantly white institution okay right so it's this these forms and ways to bring black people together okay. and in turn not only bring us together but to promote unity and promote wealth and okay also big like protect each other and yeah help each other prosper in a sense right so okay. bringing the black community together so that was the purpose of it right and, and then after a time it just kind of i guess it's kind of fading away now so, so i don't know okay even with it, it like necessarily being like watered down do you think it'll continue to serve its purpose Frats, or do you think it'll go in a different direction? Man, at this rate, I can't. I can't even call it, man. Because really? I've been in the bond for ten years now. I crossed in twenty ten. Okay. So I, when I crossed, it was around the 
around like the next generation that was what we see now. Mm-hmm. So I, 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 I still was part of that generation that was prior and I was part of like the transition almost into what okay. the fraternities are kind of evolving to. Okay. So I kind of need growing up in the, 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 the latter part, it's kind of sucks mm-hmm. because of what I have to see. I'm not there. So I don't, yeah. I'm not too involved in what the, the cats sure. on the yard do anymore. I'm just like, Hey man, I, I got my own life and <laughs> I gotta worry about right now. Yeah. I'm there. I'm always there to give advice in anything I could do, right? So yeah. I still love the fraternity. I'm still a part of it. So it. anything I could do to help her, like uh, help those young brothers out there, like you know, accomplish whatever they need yeah. to. I'm always there for them. I feel that. You know, you you can always you always still play big brother to your chapter for sure. That's what's up. You know, that's, that's my, dope. Yeah, that's, that's my yard, dope. man. Yeah, man. Um, so you say you like you enjoy history like that you read a lot of books man so that's always been my downfall i've okay. never been a big reader it's not a downfall. but see that's what i always want to read like i shit, i got a book right by my nightstand right and i'm like i still can't get past the first chapter right i look at it, i'm like man what I need book to read is this. um it's by jonah burger uh burger okay. jonah Bur- yeah did i say it right it's uh why things catch on Okay. So what made me start that book is um, Nipsey. So uh-huh. like an old Nipsey interview when he was talking about when he dropped the Crenshaw mixtape, what inspired him to charge the hundred dollars for those thousand CDs was that, was that book, right? Really? Yeah. So that's okay. what made me uh, want to go and get it. So I was like, okay. let me check this book out and you know uh, try to gain some inspiration. So I started reading that and it was really good in the beginning. So yeah. So different things like that, man. I, this is what I would say, bro, because I like to read a lot. And I could, like, I, I if for a long, for the longest, like, I couldn't. Like, you, I how did you get to read it, man? What'd you do? So, I just make it my own, bro. Yeah. So, this don't sound, sound weird. So, I, I read, like, a chapter at a time. But I'll read, like, five books at one time. So, I read one chapter. Yeah. Usually in the morning or night. And I literally, like, if I go through it and I read a sentence and I'm like, all right. Like, I didn't need all of that. I literally, like, I cross it out or I just underline or, like, circle what I yeah. felt like was important. That way I could I could still, I'm, I'm, I'm steady moving. And everything that I don't need, if I need to go back and look through the book, yeah. I know right where what I need is. So, oh, yeah, like, dope. you just make it your own, bro. Like, have you ever heard of that book, uh, The Prince by Machiavelli, that, like, Tupac talked mm-hmm. about? So, like, I read that. I was like, all right, how could I, like make people from my culture like relate to this like i would call it the plug and and i would just change everything whatever they're saying i would like you said i would make it to where people could understand yeah. it like from our culture bro. so like any book that i read bro like i, I always got a pen bro and i always got to like underline stuff like all right, that was real good that was whatever it was like that was a gym yeah underline it I'm like all right like i need that all the other bullshit like i read it and i just just pass it and go on bro but the, the good stuff that I feel like I need to keep, like, I, I, I underline, bro, and, like, highlight and shit. And I just read a little bit at a time, bro, like, little by little, bro. Damn. But everybody consumes, like, information differently, bro. Yeah. Like, I like audio books, like, podcasts, YouTube, interviews, like, all kind of shit, bro. Yeah, that's usually yeah. what forms I usually go for. Like, like the visual, audio. audio. I'm yeah. a visual guy. Yeah. Like, I like I movies, film, television. Like, if it's in, if it's in, like, a... Video form, oh yeah, yeah. Put that sucker on, man. I feel you. If I could watch a book, I'd do that. Yeah, I'd watch that whole sucker. You're saying something. Yeah. You know I mean, saying? most movies are books. Yeah, that's why. I, that's why I gravitate towards them, right? I'm, a, I'm a like a, I'm a visually creative person, right? Yeah. When it comes to writing and all of that, that might be my, yeah. my struggles. Okay. Right? Reading and all of that, like that's yeah. probably my. I would say that's where I want to improve. Really? Now we all have like areas we need to improve on. That's my my area. I, I mean, I'll be looking at it like I'll be looking at it like this, bro. Because I'll be I had learned shit the hard way. Like one, I can't do everything on my own. So it's like where I lack. Like like if you if you're good at like visually yeah. what you do, and I'm good at like writing or what I do, it's like cool. It don't matter if I lack because like he pick up where I slack and I pick up where he slack. Exactly. That's like my weaknesses. I'll be like. Okay, like that's just what it is. I can't change it, you know what I mean? Dang. It's just like I, that. That lets me further know to like, I like I can't do this by myself. Like, so don't try. So like, it's like when, when people hit like uh, writer's block. Yeah. It's like, well, shit. Maybe you need to let somebody else like put their two cents in on the shit. You know what I mean? Bro, it's always good to have some type of, uh, uh I guess like some assistance in certain forms. Right. Yeah. Like me personally, I'm not like when I create. 
I'm 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 like one of those like artists who are like I'm sensitive about my shit. I don't oh. want nobody to I don't want to show nobody until I finish it. And then I always show like a couple people, like you know the certain people that you always want to. Yeah. Hey, bro. Hey, gr- hey. T- hey, tell me what you think about this. Yeah. Anything I should do? Anything different? Change? Yeah. Okay, cool. If you like it, then I'm good. That means I know. That's I true. know everybody else gonna feel some way about it. Then that's true. You know, you always got those people you can lean on, man. Yeah. That's the beauty about creating. Yeah, that's true. And uh, shit, we got like five minutes, yo. If you want to kick a freestyle, you oh, can. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> we can hit that, hold on. We can. Talk. It's, it's straight acapella, bro. It's, it's straight acapella, yo. Acapella, shit. Let me go ahead and pull up. We're going to pull up a little YouTube beat, dog. We got, that was going to hit yeah. us with an ad. Get into the mic, man. Let's yeah, see. sir. Let's see. Yeah. I can pull one up real quick. That'd be handy with it. So, do you do you put out music? Oh, boy, hell nah. No. <laughs> I don't want to shife the world. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I got but, you. I need to just stick to my uh, skits and podcasts. <laughs> yeah, that's what's up, man. But, uh, we, you know, we be fucking around freestyling this shit for no reason. You know, how, you know how Texans are, man. We just yeah, oh, bro. Yeah, drop that man. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we, we ain't got to do that shit, man. Um, I don't know if anything, bro. Just like, it's anybody like that you. Would want to speak to a certain group or anything like that you would specifically want to say, bro? Like, like now is like the perfect time. Man, I Damn. guess uh, I always like to leave people with a little some some, okay. uh, a little message. Uh, I guess us talking about uh, creating and doing different things in life and uh, breaking out of the the norm and whatnot. One of the one of the best things I ever heard was make uh, change a constant, mm-hmm. right? So um, okay. never get never get. Uh, Never settle for anything, right? Always, always continue to do things differently. You know, find different ways of attacking your passions and your dreams, okay. and continue to pursue them. Don't let other influences outside yeah. deter you from what you really want to do and where you feel like you really should be at. That's something I always uh, I have an internal battle with as well. I'm sure a lot of other people face that too, okay. because fear is the biggest uh, the biggest dream killer. Yeah. You know, fear is what keeps us from actually becoming our our best our best us. So keep make change a constant, man. So you know, continue to pursue that uh, that happiness that that you're always uh, trying to attain in life. God. That's all I want to tell people, man. That's what's up. Um, shit, 2019 just ended. It's 2020. Um, the way that I just like wanted to like go about this year was like. Like, I used to think of things, like, I would have ideas, and, like, I would want to execute them, and I would think it would happen, like, fast. But, like, just having lived, bro, and, like, went through shit, I look at stuff from, like, years like years down the line. Like, even if I have an idea for something, I'm like, it's probably not going to happen for, like, a few years. So, like, let me not try to just go into this, like, really fast. Like, with 2020, I'm looking at things from, like, the decade. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the decade, bro. Like, how, like, there's not many people that, like, transcend – Throughout a decade, you yeah. know? like Drake did it, like it's there. There are some, but yeah, like it's hard. It's hard to be relevant and keep continue to pull out great content for ten years. So that's like kind of like where I'm at with like 2020. I know everybody say they like 2020 goals and they posting like Lambo yeah. trucks and like mansions, and I'm like, man, like all right, 2030, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like. <laughs> That's just that's kind of just where I'm at. No, I feel bro. it, man. Yeah. Uh, you got to, big dog. That's yeah. all you can do, man. Yeah. And I tell everybody, every new year is not a clean slate. Every yeah. day, every day is a clean yeah. slate. Man. <laughs> every day you wake up is a blessing, man. And you have you have another 24 hours to to do whatever you feel like you didn't get accomplished. <laughs> 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 man, we got my man. The funk is real.